everybody, and welcome to the James Perry Show here on AM 790 WPRV and on Facebook Live. We are thrilled to be back at Hope Street Pizza here on the east side of Providence. It's been a while, and we are thrilled to be back. Coach Perry is with us. John Anderson, the, uh, well, soon to be the play-by-play -play voice of Brown Football on AM 790. We'll get to that in just a moment, but let me tell you that the James Perry Show is brought to you in part by Bay Coast Bank, the exclusive banking partner of Brown Athletics and Recreation, a proud community bank serving the people and businesses of Massachusetts and Rhode Island. Well, when the Bears take the field on Saturday for the 105th renewal of the Governor's Cup matchup with URI, it will have been 665 days between football games. The last time the Bears were on the field was back in November of 2019 when they lost a close one to the eventual Ivy League champion, Big Green of Dartmouth College. And uh, I, I think I speak for all Brown football fans and everybody associated with this program, Coach Perry, when I say it's going to be great to see you guys back out there on Saturday. Yeah, it sure will. I got the uh, adrenaline flowing through my veins right now just thinking about it and I uh, just left the practice field and I know there's 110 guys who feel the same way. You know that's amazing coach you said 110 guys I remember looking down on the field what like you said Scott 80 guys so you built that roster up over over this last year. Yeah and the enthusiasm has matched it you know we've grown the roster it's a terrific group of kids who are, who are just pumped to be at Brown and certainly pumped to be playing a football game on Saturday. James, to me, that may have been, of all the things uh, that came out of the pandemic, maybe the biggest to benefit, in my opinion, for your football program, you correct me if I'm wrong, is the fact that you were able to add much needed depth. Two full recruiting classes to your roster to get the numbers up to where everybody else is in the league. Yeah, and I think it's a credit, you know, first of all, it's a credit to the staff, the way, we, way how hard they recruited. Uh, it's a credit to the department and the support that we've received. And then importantly, it's a credit to those fifth year guys. Uh, we've had some, some terrific leadership, guys who've stuck with the program and, and helped us grow and now put us in a position to compete. Coach, t tell, tell the audience out there because, I mean, last year Ivy League did not play, play football. Other, other leagues did. What are some of the things you did to, to keep your student athletes invested, interested, and with all this enthusiasm we're feeling. Yeah, you know, it's amazing how maturely they handled it, to be honest with you. I think the kids understood that it was, it was what, what was best for us, given the circumstance that we were faced with, the, you know, and I think they, you know, every step of the way we found new and creative ways to engage the guys. Some of that was finding ways virtually to engage them. Uh, and then when the, when the time came to return to campus in a, in a more fuller level in the spring, uh, each step of the way, the guys handled it maturely and, and we developed. James, uh, I think you'd agree that, that Brown did a great job of managing the pandemic and put so much resources into testing and follow-up and things of that nature to the point where they were, they did have school last year. Now a lot of classes were remote, but they brought kids back to campus. But one of the things they did to try to alleviate crowding on campus was they broke the year up into trimesters. And so the third trimester actually was over those summer months, and it included your freshmen at the time that are now sophomores this fall. How beneficial was it to be able to work with those young men during that summer trimester to kind of get them familiar with the program, what you like to do, the playbook, all that stuff so they can hit the ground running this fall? Yeah, and, and I think just first of all, I'm really proud as an alum, Brown as a leader in, in this regard and, and, and how committed we are to educating the kids. And when it, you know, when it came time to make that announcement that the freshmen weren't coming in the fall, uh, you know, I had a lot of parents who were kind of hitting the panic button. I said, well, slow down now. A summer in Providence could be pretty awesome. <laughs> and next thing you know, by the time the summer rolled around, it, it, sure enough, it was. It was awesome. Uh, it was awesome for those kids, for me as a coach, to get to work with them. Um, so kind of a silver lining in a very difficult situation. L let me ask you this, Coach. As you're d doing your development with the, your players, when we look at the roster, a senior was really a sophomore. You know, a freshman is now a junior. You know what I mean? And we and you can figure this out by the end of the night. I, I, I know. As I'm looking at all the This is going to be like an Abbott and Abbott routine. Yeah. I mean, you're trying to figure out what year everybody is. Know, what, what year they're all in, but everyone's in the same boat. But how do you see that as, as you develop your players? Because usually, as, as, as you know, we take them in as freshmen, sophomores. We develop them. They play a little bit as a junior. By the time they're a senior, you know, they're contributing 
you know, heavily because they have experience. Yep. Well, I think, first of all, with the years, you, you had to do right by the kid. So I think the league did the right thing. You know, they, they lost a year, and, and you, can't, you can't do it any other way. Uh, now juggling what it means, you know, strategically what year they are, that's something as a program that we'll try to do better than everybody else. Uh, importantly for me, for this year, we have two senior classes. And that's kind of the bottom line. How it affects the younger guys, that will express itself over time. But how it's affecting our team right now, I, we just have terrific leadership. You know, we have a senior class, and we also have a group of fifth years who were seniors who, who chose to take a semester off and are, are back with us again. So um, that's, a, that's an advantage. Coach, you made a, a great speech at the Brown Football Association Golf Classic about those fifth-year seniors and their dedication to the program and the fact that despite all they went through, that they still would choose to come back and be a part of this program in 2021. Can you kind of take us through that speech and exactly what you told people that were at Rhode Island Country Club that day? Yeah, you know, it's a remarkable group. I mean, that, that group of guys, you know, they were 1-20 in, in the league in three years. They had their senior year canceled. They handled that maturely. They were faced with the decision whether to take a semester off, which is a big move. Talk to their parents, figure out what they're going to do for six months. Uh, and they were just committed to Brown. They were committed to Brown football, committed to the school. I think they saw the vision of, of the administration, people like President Paxson, that we were going to return to normal this year in, in activities and all those things. And they bought into that messaging. And, you know, I'm really proud of them. And uh, obviously I'm the beneficiary of it. So selfishly, it was, a, it was a huge thing for me in the program. But I think it speaks a lot to them. Uh, of course, one of them just walked in right now. But uh, in Nate Brown, but the whole group of them. So I'm proud of them and, and, and look forward to watching them compete Saturday. Does that lead to the future, though, Coach, of uh, the people, young men that are, are juniors now that will be a senior actually can come back and play two years? So yes. is this going to go down the line that maybe this group set an example? As I know you said, you had about 12 come back, that you're going to have a groups that will come back year after year? Yep, so it's, it's their option. And, and, and that's what I meant by doing right by the kid. I think the league you know, did the right thing. Um, so each kid will have his, uh, the option. Yep. Of course, they, they'll have the option to grad transfer as well. So, um, and, and I think it's an individual case-by-case -case situation and what they decide to do. But it certainly was the right thing to do. And then over time, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I obviously hope as many of them take the opportunity as, as possible. Coach, taking us back to 2019, year one for you, you had to lay the foundation, so to speak, and I thought you did a great job, and I think your kids did a terrific job of buying in what you and your coaching staff were selling. Uh, the effort, the enthusiasm was very clear on the practice field and on Saturdays on game day. I know the record will say 2-8, and eight, but we can go relive some of those games, Dartmouth, Cornell, Penn, Rhode Island, you, you name it, right? Um, but the fact of the matter is, in terms of laying that foundation in year one and all the things that you had to do, I mean, John and I, uh -huh. we felt the excitement up in the press box. How did it go from your perspective? Well, the first thing is, in order to play fast, it, it, it takes a lot of work. You know, it, these kids have to be in great shape. It's tremendously demanding, the style of play that we have. Uh, it requires a lot of fitness, uh, and in, in, in some ways, the smaller the roster, the more challenging that is. But actually, now that we have a, a full roster, these practices, we're just able with scout teams and, and really multiple people to e play even faster, practice even faster. So it took a lot of commitment. Uh, the kids handled it really well. And over the course of time, it showed. You know, we were in, in, in increased fitness level over the course of a season. We were, had a better grip of what playing fast meant and how to execute it. And, you know, I was kind of like you, Scott. Like, you, you never know how fast things will develop. Uh, I was really happy. And then how fast things will develop now, again, you never know. But I do know we're practicing hard. So, you know, I, I'm confident that we'll show increased improvement. As we talk, uh, as we get into it, I mean, obviously the offense, you know, you're led by uh, EJ uh, Perry, co-player of the year, un unbelievable player. As, as he's coming back, and he came back here, and the people around him now, as you look at that surroundings as you go into this season with him, 
a lot of younger guys on that outside uh, what receiver core. I mean, have they been developed along with him over this last uh, year? Yeah, and, and, we, and we will miss a, a bunch of guys. You know, yeah. we, we got a guy in the NFL and Mike Hoyt. We're going to miss him tremendously. Yeah. We got some terrific wideouts we're going to miss. And, man, uh, you know, I, I, I called uh, uh, Dimitri the other day just to be like, oh, I miss you, man. So uh, those guys will be missed. The, the thing that's nice is we're a lot deeper. So whether it's up front or outside, we have tr tremendous depth, which is what we need, right? Defensively the same. You're not going to replace Mike yeah. Hoyt, right? No. You know, it's not like that. No. But we are so much deeper now. And I think uh, from my perspective, it's it's nice to see it's, it's less about one guy than it is, man, we're practicing well. We're a deeper team. And uh, I think that leads to, to better success. On and, the and as I, Scott and I went through that 2019, as he said, I mean, it was so exciting for us up there to call. But we saw that even on the sidelines. We saw not an eye. We saw a team. You know, we saw individuals. We saw guys invested both offense and defensively, younger, older, all cheering for the cause. I mean, it was exciting well, to see that mentality on that sideline in 19. Yeah. Coach, you also have to be very excited, and I know you and your uh, student-athletes will get a chance to step on it for the first time tomorrow, the brand-new Richard Gauss Field at Brown Stadium. Coach Perry and the Bears like to play fast, and now they have a surface that they can play fast on. How cool is this going to be? Oh, it's awesome. It's beautiful. And I, th you know, I really think it's fitting that it's Richard, someone who – the whole program so many countless players know him personally uh he's he, you know he's not some distant donor that no one no one knows or anything like that this is a guy who supported so many guys so many guys have worked for him since i was a student who stayed in touch with the program who really is emblematic of everything that's good about brown football so it's cool that, it, that it'll be richard gauss field it's incredible that it's you know it's a perfect field for our brand of play uh and it's really emblematic of the support that we have from whether it's President Paxson or our new vice president uh, Grace Calhoun of uh, the athletics division I mean just it, it really is a great feeling throughout the whole department you know we uh, it's a fun time to be a Brown and it'll be a fun time to be a Brown football player on Saturday well to follow up on that I, I thought uh, it, a great event took place a few nights ago on campus at Edelson quad uh, Dr. Grace Calhoun, our new boss, the big boss. She's the director, the vice president of athletics and recreation at Brown. Uh, she came up with a great idea to get the entire department, student athletes and staff together on Edelson Quad for like a barbecue. And President Paxson was there, the Brown band was there, and everybody was singing the fight song Ever True. Uh, but to get all the athletes to come together and say, hey, you know what? Uh, we're one big family and we should all support each other as such. And I know I've seen your team this summer. I've seen them at field hockey games, soccer games, you name it. But it's great when the student athletes show up to other events to support their fellow student athletes. And that was just a great moment Monday night where everybody kind of came together as one. And, and to me, that's what Brown is. You know, Brown is the happiest place on earth. So uh, watching those kids have fun together, um, we even turned into a dance party towards the end of it. You know there's a lot of energy in the, in, in, in with the kids. And um, so it was, a, it was a, I think, another indication of the positive momentum the school's made and it you know it starts at the top and it comes down and then sure enough here the kids are having fun and acting like brown students all right coach we're going to let you step aside your family just walked in so yep. why don't you go say hello to your children and your wife and have something to eat here at oak right. street pizza when we come back nathan brown and jason medeiros will be our guest when the james perry show continues from oak street pizza right after this Doctors at University Orthopedics have been caring for the people of Southeastern New England for more than 40 years. With the Warren Alpert Medical School of Brown University, we train the next generation of orthopedic surgeons. Our state-of-the-art facilities stretch from Westerly to Mansfield. At our East Bay Surgery Center, we've performed thousands of surgeries, including same-day total joint replacements. We've grown through the years, but our goal has always been getting you back to doing what you love to do. The best orthopedic care anywhere is right here. University Orthopedics. From corporate events to weddings by the bay to private celebrations, the Pronzi name means elegance, personalized service, and exacting attention to detail. 
Pranzi has everything you need in one place. Event planning, catering, tents, tables and chairs, decor, and so much more. Call Pranzi today and let them plan your next event. Why go anywhere else? Doctors at University Orthopedics have been caring for the people of Southeastern New England for more than 40 years. With the Warren Alpert Medical School of Brown University, we train the next generation of orthopedic surgeons. Our state-of-the-art facilities stretch from Westerly to Mansfield. At our East Bay Surgery Center, we've performed thousands of surgeries, including same-day total joint replacements. We've grown through the years, but our goal has always been getting you back to doing what you love to do. The best orthopedic care anywhere is right here. University Orthopedics. From corporate events to weddings by the bay to private celebrations, the Pranzi name means elegance, personalized service, and exacting attention to detail. Pranzi has everything you need in one place. Event planning, catering, tents, tables and chairs, decor, and so much more. Call Pranzi today and let them plan your next event. Why go anywhere else? The day the world stopped was the day we found where to go. From now on, we're not going to leave anything on our plates because we've learned to savor the moments that were always there and they never tasted this good. And elite Physical Therapy was founded on relationships and wanting to do the very best and elite by others. Having our partnerships with institutions like the University of Rhode Island, Providence College, and Brown University have made us proud to continue to serve the communities like they do. I can say that I'm incredibly proud of our team and our community. Treating them, we know these people on a personal level. Here at Elite, we really focus on the person and what's important to the person. We love Rhode Island, we're living here, we're raising our families here. show on AM 790 WPRV and on Facebook Live. I'm your host Scott Credici. John Anderson with us. In just a moment we'll introduce you to the two gentlemen sitting between us but let me tell you that this portion of the James Perry Show is brought to you by Rhode Island Medical Imaging the official MRI provider of Brown Football with 13 locations statewide. Remy specialized radiologists and patient focused care are in your neighborhood. Well as I said we're all excited for Saturday's game the first one and almost two years for the Brown Bears, and joining us to talk about it, a pair of seniors on this year's team. First of all, we have a senior defensive end from Fayetteville, Georgia, Nathan Brown. Nathan, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. It's good to be here. Well, it's great to talk to you, Nathan, and also with you, your fellow teammates, senior linebacker Jason Medeiros from nearby Rehoboth, Mass. How are you doing, Jason? Good. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you guys for coming on the show. Appreciate it. Um, uh, we'll start with you, Nathan. Uh, a terrific story about you on brownbears.com. Uh, I think it was yesterday it was put out, and and, uh, John, I don't know if you had a chance yeah. to see it, but it really was an amazing story. So, Nathan, I know your story because I know I remember when you walked onto the football team when you arrived on College Hill, and not only did you make the team, but you played right away as a freshman. You made an impact on the field. Obviously, I was super impressed at the type of person you were. And then to find out what you're doing, you're a biomedical engineering concentrator. 
tell everybody what you have been doing the, this past year or so, the story that I just alluded to on brownbears.com. Yeah, thank you very much. So um, basically this past year or so, I've been working on a, I've been working on a wheelchair uh, design project uh, focused on increasing accessibility uh, to tougher terrain or uh, difficult spaces. So uh, for example, people living in nursing homes, they might feel more comfortable uh, going out on excursions or being able to get out in nature. So that's the thing I've been focused on recently. So you teamed up with a fellow student, right, to develop this wheelchair for rough terrain, and you were awarded, awarded the Royce Fellowship, which is a research grant to kind of get this thing going, right? Yes, sir. So originally I was working with uh, a fellow student, David, uh, on his graduate uh, thesis took it on myself uh, and applied for the Royce Fellowship over the summer. Uh, and that's been a great opportunity to make it community-based, reaching out uh, and interviewing people, like I said, in these senior living communities uh, and getting, making their contributions a central piece of the research. And if I read the piece correctly, your dad had some health issues, right? When you were young yes, and seeing him kind of battle back from the things he had to go through kind of gave you the desire to do something like this. Is that accurate to say? Yeah, so um, that's how I got into biomedical engineering. He had a knee replacement that had some complications, ended up in three procedures, uh, but just got my wheels turned on. Who does this? You know, and thinking about it, and now I'm about to graduate with that degree myself. That's terrific. Now, I understand this is an ongoing situation, correct? You're now, over the next coming months, you'll be receiving feedback as to how uh, this thing that you designed is working and, and how people that are using it like it? Is it well, what happens next? Yeah, so right now uh, in the process of gathering more interviews and getting more feedback uh, and applying it to uh, the redesigns of the wheelchair design itself. Um, so in this fall, this November, I'm going to be presenting uh, the final results of that uh, for the fellowship. Let me ask you a question. Is there any way you can design a track to put me on it and I get right up to the press box? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the old guy. Get me on yeah, one no, of those. That's stay terrain. Stay <laughs> you can get me up the top there. Yeah, we have to use that for when we run the stage stuff ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, equally as impressive as the man sitting to my right, Jason Medeiros. And Jason, you made quite an impression on me as well when you were a freshman because like Nathan, you came in and played for this football team right away. In fact, I think you were sixth on the team in tackles. I think you led freshman in tackles. Uh, your freshman year on the team but what what I loved about you was and I assume you're still the same guy this guy would spend you know the amount of hours they spend in the office in meetings and you know practice and everything else his free time was spent in the office watching film because he wanted to be a better player. I mean, that's that, that to me is that's work ethic, that's dedication, and congratulations for that. Thank you. Um, well, first, it, um, I have just you know, what Nate's doing is incredible. <laughs> to follow that up, um, you know, do what he's doing for you know the community, and you know, all my free time might be spent, you know, in the film room making sure I'm prepared. He's also doing stuff that's going to change the world and change people's lives. Um, so I'd be remiss if I didn't at least point that out. And um, in going off what you were saying, um, you know, one thing about me is I'm never going to be the strongest person or the fastest person on the football field but you know nobody's going to outwork me and be more prepared at least um, in the game plan um, and we're looking forward to doing that against you all right this weekend uh, you just said something great and to me that's the beauty of brown isn't it you just you just said he's doing something to change people's lives I kind of feel like that's what Brown's all about. It gives you that opportunity to do great things like that. Undoubtedly, and be able to work with guys like Nate, who, like I said, are just doing things. I'm um, coming up with inventions and, and creating things. I, I mean, there are plenty of guys on the team that are also doing pre-med. I mean, I'm sure you'll have Chapman Webster coming on pretty soon. I mean, pretty some other guys like Tim Forster are also doing pre-med tracks that are going to, you know, change the transcendent at the medical um, world. Um, being able to work with these guys and be able to come together on the football field from all these different um, parts of the world, parts of our lives, you know, really bond together with football is um, something pretty incredible that Brown gives us. Let, let me ask you two guys, you're both uh, leaders. I mean, you've played as freshmen, you traveled with the, with the team, so you've had a, a long journey, you know, through, through Brown football. You, you know, it's been great to call both of you. Talk to us about the journey. You know, it, you started off as freshman, you're seniors, you lost a year there uh, with COVID, a difficult year. Tell, talk to us about this journey. Um, for me, like I said, I came in as a, as a walk-on and uh, a little bit different perspective. Uh, I really appreciate the Coach Estes and their the coaching staff giving me an opportunity to come in and play. Um, but, you know, coming in for Coach Perry and everything, it really has been a great culture shift uh, for us and moving in a positive direction. Um, and I'm happy to be able to come out for one more season with them. 
How about you, Jason? Yeah, it, it's been quite a journey from me being, you know, the last person technically recruited in my uh, in my class um, to eventually, um, you know, starting as a freshman and being able to, um, you know, hopefully continue to do that throughout my career. Um, then on the side, academics, being able to, you know, double major in history and political science, um, and as well as so many other opportunities Brown's given me, people I've encountered. Um, and then obviously with the COVID year, but as Coach Perry and the staff done a great job keeping us prepared, whether through the off season doing Zoom meetings, well, you know, we couldn't meet together. Um, but all these guys like Nate um, working working their tails off um, in the offseason when, you know, nobody was watching to, you know, let that come to fruition, hopefully, on the football field. So both of you guys played with Michael Hoyt, right? Former teammate of yours, now in the NFL on the Rams 53-man roster after making their practice squad last year. I'll tell you a story about Michael Hoyt, and, you know, similar to the great work ethic we talked about with you two young men. I, I knew the kid was special when his freshman year, it's spring break, and, you know, most young men on the football team and everywhere else on campus, and ladies for that matter, they're, they're off for spring break, right? Going someplace warm or just someplace to relax and unwind. My phone rings at the start of spring break, and it's Michael Hoyt. And he said, Mr. Cordishi? I said, yeah, Michael, how you doing? He said, are you around? I said, well, yeah, I'm at my home in East Providence, five minutes from campus. Would you mind coming and opening up the shed for me so I can get the tackling dummies out and do some work? You know, spring break. I mean, every kid's away from school, and this kid's working his tail off to, to be better. And that just, that kind of told me who Michael Hoyt was. And you know, when we ran, we had running tests, he'd run with the skill guys, right? He wouldn't run with the bigs who had to make a slower time. He'd run with the skill players, the receivers and the, the corners, and he'd beat them all. I mean, so I'm not surprised that he's playing on Sundays in the NFL. Are you? Uh, no, I'm not. And being able to be in the same position role with Hoyt um, was, you know, being able to see that work ethic up close, you know, every day in practice. And to be honest, Jason brings that same thing. You know, I see, I see the same work ethic and be able to, you know, come out. It's the first week, first game week, and he's clean on the first day of practice this week. Uh, and that's what we need to come out and have the game this weekend. Let me ask you guys a question as we look towards uh, this weekend. You know, you're back out on the field. Can't give away any of the game plan. But uh, what are you seeing uh, with this URI team? You guys are both defensive guys. They've had a couple of games under their belt. They played in the spring. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've got a challenge ahead of us, as we know. Absolutely. I, I can, you know, so what, what do we have to do here to pull up that victory? Absolutely. I, I can definitely speak to that a little bit. Um, URI, as usual, they have, they have a very – they're a very good football team. Um, they, if they're not in the top 25 of the FCS, they're, they're right on the right on the cusp. Um, yep. They have a very big offensive line. At least we can maybe speak more about the offense than so on the defense. Um, but in terms of offensively, um, very good wide receivers. Um, the quarterback, um, dual threat. Um, very good running backs. Um, they're, they're good all, all around. And um, we're going to have a very good game, um, which I think we're capable of doing. Like guys like Nate, um, you know, and a bunch of other defensive leaders that we have going out and uh, working hard all week. And, you know, we've had a good week of practice. Have to follow that up again tomorrow with another practice. Um, but I think um, – Maybe they can touch on a little bit more, uh, what, maybe what he sees. Um, yeah, so they're definitely a good team. They're a solid team. But the things that we're trying to focus on this week are being straight on our fundamentals, being in the right place where we need to be, and then being physical once we get there. Uh, and that's what we're going to need to do to, you know, overcome them this weekend. So obviously, that, uh, I don't know if there's a couple of years of rust to knock off, so to speak, but you guys know what it's like. That first game, you're always playing a team that's played two, has two games under its belt, right? Normally, we have Rody in like yeah. the third week of the season. This yeah. year, we just happen to open up with them. But, you know, do you feel like there's that little period, like, to start the game where you're just kind of knocking off the rust, so to speak? I know, you know, two years ago, we opened against Brian. We beat the Bulldogs on your game-sealing interception in the end zone, but is there any of that at play, or is that something that, you know, we guys in the media, we, we make too much of? Um, I, I think... I mean, honestly, we're not going to make any excuses for why um, if anything goes wrong. I mean, we've been practicing inexorably all week long um, and all, all camp um, and then preparing in other ways maybe that these teams couldn't, uh, maybe stepping back in the offseason, really honing in our technique and fundamentals and obviously looking film, what are we looking at, um, what tips are people going to give us. Um, so I don't think there's going to be any of that rust, um, you know, if any of that, that, that was knocked off in the Yale scrimmage. So I think we're, we're ready to go. Right. Yeah, for me, as, lo as long as we're looking forward to that, contact we'll be ready for it you know as long as we're excited to bring it um it shouldn't be any problems 
so uh, the new field turf, as I said, you guys have to be excited to get on the field tomorrow for a walkthrough. Um, you remember the old grass field, right? And how clowned it was. Well, guess what? Down the, that big hump in the middle of the field is gone. It, it, it's it's very slightly crowned, but it's pretty flat, as, as you probably know, field turf fields are. So is this going to be a, a good thing for, for the team and the program? So excited to get on the new field. You know, as soon as I got the word of it, as soon as I saw the post, you know, it takes it. Uh, my roommate Ryan immediately and the other seniors, you know, we're finally going to have the opportunity to be on some turf at home. Uh, most of the other Ivy League stadiums have turf, uh, you know, but it's, it's very exciting for us to be able to play fast uh, on the turf. The grass was, like you said, the slope was running uphill in every direction. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, we're excited to get out there. I'm excited to see it for the first time tomorrow. How about you? I'm very excited and obviously very thankful for all the, the people that donated and made, made this possible and one of the other great, uh, great things about Brown. Um, but absolutely, I mean, going back to, you know, our game against Penn my freshman year when it was absolute mud bowl and we were slipping and sliding all over the place, um, we're, we're very thankful to, to at least go out there and play fast, as Coach Perry always talks about, especially with the turf. That, that'll definitely help us. So, Nathan, you mentioned my guy, Putt. Oh, do I love Ryan Putman, <laughs> man. He is a character, just a great young man. You and him did something very unique uh, during uh, this pandemic, uh, but as it relates to the social unrest that was happening in this country, you created something. What was that? Uh, we created a social outreach, a community service organization called Lead with Love, um, and you know the name kind of speaks for itself in terms of the the mission or the mission statement that we're trying to uh, bring for all those who want to be a part of the work that we're doing. Uh, but right now, it's the community service organization for the football team, uh, and we're trying to expand that to other sports organizations and uh, other parts of campus as well. Uh, but right now, we're partnered with Tides Family Services, uh, and we've been having some virtual events. As as much as COVID would allow it and the pandemic would allow. Uh, but excited to actually have our first in-person event recently um, in which we had some tie-dye events. We were able to get the kids out on the field, uh, see them in person, show them the facilities. And it's just the beginning of uh, an exciting new piece of what we hope to be of Brown football. That's awesome. Listen. I mean, and, and as you know, you guys are like rock stars to little kids. You know, they, they see you guys, these big football players. and. I mean, that, 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 that's awesome. And, that, and that's a great, the Tide Family Services is a great alignment. I mean, I have a sister-in-law who worked there, and mm -hmm. my brother Jim who played here, they sponsored a golf tournament for that organization. So, yeah. I mean, that, that's a great organization. Absolutely. It's great, great stuff to hear. Mm -hmm. and, and it's, you know, it's in addition to, you guys do so much. You, you know, you guys are involved with the Fox Point Elementary School. You guys for years have done the bench press for cancer. Um, you know, it's amazing that you guys are able to, to do what you do considering that you're full-time students at an Ivy League institution and you're an athlete as well, which takes a lot of time and dedication. Well, it's not just an athlete, which people don't realize. It's a Division One athlete. Right, like you just said, athlete. My, my, my coach played in the NFL. I mean, we watch the week every week. The talent is unbelievable how it's risen over the years in the Ivy League right. mm -hmm. and the demands that you guys still have to do. It amazes us, as, as we call the games, to see such excellence in athletics and then excellence as students. So what's the key to your time management, Jason? How, how do you do it? I mean, because it doesn't seem yeah. like there's enough hours in the day to do what you guys do. Uh, it's difficult. I mean, between you know football practice, I'm also a head TA for Professor Hazeltine in the School of Engineering, um, and, and along with that, double majoring. So in terms of prioritizing, um, just as Nate and all my teammates do, um, it's uh, it's just prioritizing time management. You know what needs to be done. You know what can what can wait. Um, and you no, know, obviously school always comes first, and then football is a close second. Um, but the first thing we are, we are student athletes, um, and it's really just all about prior prioritizing, uh, making sure um, we're on top of our schedules, and I'm sure Nate can talk a little bit more about that too. Um, yeah, for me, Google Calendar is my savior and best friend. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, I think that that is also part of what it means to be at Brown and to be at an institution like this is that we're not only trying to be students, we're not only trying to get out on the field and play and be successful, but we're trying to make an impact, you know, in what we're doing and we are conscious that um, we're not we're living in a bubble but that doesn't mean that we have to stay in it in everything that we do and right. we can reach out and have an impact even in the community that's around us so jason you mentioned professor hazeltine does that mean you're a beo concentrator i uh, know i'm actually history and political science oh is that right <laughs> that's so, it so how'd you hook up with professor hazeltine 
So I actually took, I've taken all of his courses um, at Brown, uh, and then I, I, he reached out to me and said, you know, if, you, if you'd like to come along, I obviously I, I did very well on his courses, um, and, and he gave me that opportunity, and I started out as just a TA, um, and then uh, I took over as head TA just recently this past year. Congratulations. The beauty of the open curriculum at Brown right yeah. there, right? <laughs> so... This is, uh, do you each have another year, or are you fifth fifth year? Uh, yeah, I'll be graduated this December. And how about you? I, I do have a fifth year that I plan on taking. So you, you'll be back next year? Correct. So what's next for you? I, read, I know in the story you weren't sure about, you know, going, you know, furthering your education, or have you given any thought to that? Um, yeah, so right now I'm going to be going into the workforce, so looking for the best opportunity right now. Um, looking to work in my concentration on medical devices or in the direction of employment implantable devices, so um, knee replacements, ligament repairs, and things like that. I mean, I don't know if you have any leads on jobs right now, but I would think after doing something like this, this has to, this looks really good on someone's resume, right? I would imagine it has to open some doors for Nathan Brown. Well, that's what we're looking for. <laughs> good. good. How about you? Have you given thought to what you want to do? I, I guess you have another year to worry about I this. Have, I, I do have a little time to think about it, but first back to Nate, I mean, I mean, one thing that's great about him is, I mean, not only is he a stoop, but whoever gets him, you know, whoever, um, you know, business, I mean, they're going to get an even better person. I mean, he's yeah. probably one of the, the nicest guys on the team. Um, and then I really mean that when I say that. But, but going back to hopefully what I can, I'm hoping to do something in foreign policy and international relations. That's um, that's kind of what I'm looking at. Maybe it's something in the government. Um, but I still have a little bit of time, like I said, um, come back for that fifth year. So um, still some time to think about it. So I know we always like to ask guys how they wound up at Brown. Yeah. You're, yeah. you're from Georgia. And I think a couple of your... Was it a couple of your high school teammates or, or friends in high school that came here that uh, kind of piqued your interest in Brown? Yes, sir. So um, two people before me, Antonio Trapp and Josh Green, uh, each like in the class. So I was the third one in a row uh, yeah. to come from my school. Uh, so they came. That opened the door for my recruitment and let me know what Brown is because few people know what Brown is in the South. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, after starting to be recruited, I wasn't heavily recruited, but it was my number one school and I really wanted to be here. Um, and, you know, I was able to apply and get in and, uh, you know, we got told the story from there. And Jason, for you, I mean, just down 195, uh, <laughs> did you always want to go to school close to home or how did it work out that you wound up here? Honestly, I probably never could have imagined, you know, being right down the road. I'm 20 minutes from Brown and I'm literally, um, Never in a million years could I have imagined, you know, coming here to an Ivy League school and, and not only being, you know, being a student but being able to play football, uh, I could never have imagined, you know, growing up right down the road. Um, it really wasn't even a thought, you know, and as I got to high school, I was always, you know, my goal and aspiration was to hopefully get to an Ivy League school, and now that that's, you know, coming to fruition, and now I'm a senior, um, it, it's really been incredible. It's great for your family, right? They get to see you play on Saturdays <laughs> again this fall. That's right. My, my mom's right here. I know. <laughs> They're always loyal to the show. Yeah, your dad didn't make it. Last time you were on the show, they both came out. My, my, my dad has a meeting at work. <laughs> okay. I, I know he wouldn't miss this. He <laughs> couldn't reschedule that meeting. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, he could if he would. Well, guys, look, uh, good luck against Rhode Island on Saturday and for this upcoming season. And thanks so much for joining us on Coach's Show. Really appreciate it. Yeah, really good luck, guys. Thank you very thanks much. So much for having us. Yep. All right, Jason Medeiros, Nathan Brown, our guest on the James Perry Show. We'll take a time out and back with Coach Perry and more of the James Perry Show right after. To this. Doctors at University Orthopedics have been caring for the people of Southeastern New England for more than 40 years. With the Warren Alpert Medical School of Brown University, we train the next generation of orthopedic surgeons. Our state-of-the-art facilities stretch from Westerly to Mansfield. At our East Bay Surgery Center, we've performed thousands of surgeries, including same-day total joint replacements. We've grown through the years, but our goal has always been getting you back to doing what you love to do. The best orthopedic care anywhere is right here. University Orthopedics. From corporate events to weddings by the bay to private celebrations, the Pronzi name means elegance, personalized service, and exacting attention to detail. Pronzi has everything you need in one place. Event planning, catering, tents, tables and chairs, decor, and so much more. Call Pronzi today and let them plan your next event. Why go anywhere else? The day the world stopped was the day we found where to go. From now on, 
We're not gonna leave anything on our plates because we've learned to savor the moments that were always there and they never tasted this good. And elite Physical Therapy was founded on relationships and wanting to do the very best and elite by others. Having our partnerships with institutions like the University of Rhode Island, Providence College, and Brown University have made us proud to continue to serve the communities like they do. I can say that I'm incredibly proud of our team and our community. Treating them, we know these people on a personal level. Here at Elite, we really focus on the person and what's important to the person. We love Rhode Island, we're living here, we're raising our families here. Doctors at University Orthopedics have been caring for the people of southeastern New England for more than 40 years. With the Warren Alpert Medical School of Brown University, we train the next generation of orthopedic surgeons. Our state-of-the-art facilities stretch from Westerly to Mansfield. At our East Bay Surgery Center, we've performed thousands of surgeries, including same-day total joint replacements. We've grown through the years, but our goal has always been getting you back to doing what you love to do. The best orthopedic care anywhere is right here. University Orthopedics. From corporate events to weddings by the bay to private celebrations, the Pronzi name means elegance, personalized service, and exacting attention to detail. Pronzi has everything you need in one place. Event planning, catering, tents, tables and chairs, decor, and so much more. Call Pronzi today and let them plan your next event. Why go anywhere else? The day the world stopped was the day we found where to go. From now on, we're not going to leave anything on our plates because we've learned to savor the moments that were always there and they never tasted this good. And elite Physical Therapy was founded on relationships and wanting to do the very best and elite by others. Having our partnerships with institutions like the University of Rhode Island, Providence College, and Brown University have made us proud to continue to serve the communities like they do. I can say that I am incredibly proud of our team and our community. Treating them, we know these people on a personal level. Here at Elite, we really focus on the person and what's important to the person. We love Rhode Island, we're living here, we're raising our family. Welcome back to the James Perry Show here on AM 790 WPRV and on Facebook Live from Hope Street Pizza here on the east side of Providence. This portion of the program is brought to you by Ticket Smarter. Nothing beats the power and excitement of live events like Ticket Smarter. For all the best sports, concerts, and theater events, visit TicketSmarter.com or on the app. Ticket Smarter is proud to be the official ticket resale partner of Brown Athletics and Recreation. Ticket Smarter, a smarter way to buy tickets. Well, the beers get Getting set to take on the Rhodey Rams on Saturday at Richard Gauss Field at Brown Stadium. And, uh, you know, Coach, before we, we talk about the matchup with URI, I mean, how impressive are these oh, two young men that we just talked to? I mean, oh. what, what great stories they both have to tell. And, you know, they, they are two of the yeah. hardest workers you'll ever meet. Yeah, uh, they interview well, but they practice even better. Yeah. These guys uh, are two of the hardest workers you'll ever see. And I think the parallel between the work they do on the field for that two hours which is a lot of fun, in uh, how they work in the classroom is is obviously evident. They're very impressive. John, before you ask your qu next question, score update, Brown women's soccer at Providence College. Rebecca Rosen has scored for the Bears, and they lead the Friars 1-0 in the first half of their game up at uh, Providence College. So go Bruno. All right, John, go ahead. No, I, I was just <laughs> dovetailing off of what you said. It's amazing uh, to me every year. When we come in, we it's like these kids just get smarter and there is, I mean, fellowships, right. you know, designing a wheelchair every year. It's like, wow, the the, the ladder and the and the and the scale just goes higher and higher. No doubt. Are they getting smarter, or John? Or are you and I maybe just coming down? If you're not, just no. <laughs> so, so this is one of our top alums. I did not hear a negative word, Coach. Uh, Tuesday. 
uh, Governor McKee was kind enough to host a press conference promoting Saturday's game against Rhode Island, the Governor's Cup game, and he will be there on Saturday to, pre to present the trophy to the winning team. But uh, it was great of Governor McKee uh, to host his first press conference for this game on Tuesday. We had a lot of fun at the State House. Yeah, it really was. It, it, it's always an incredible event. I think people who don't know how important this rivalry is are, are sometimes surprised by it. But for people, you know, like us who do know, um, you know, we anticipate that this is, is going to be a great challenge. It's going to be a great competitive game and that people care about it. And uh, it was fun to see the governor take his time and, and, and that was a great event. And same kind of thing, all our guys represented themselves very well, and as did the Rhode Island kids. So uh, in preparation for, for a great tilt on Saturday. Coach, what do, you, what do you say to your team when you're in the locker room going into this game when we haven't had a game, as, as Scott said, it's been a whole season done. I mean, you played in this game yourself. You coached it uh, as an assistant here, and then you've coached it as a head coach. You know, we were down the uh, last time down there, I think. And so now you're here. You're in your home stadium, new field. What, what are you going to say to these guys? Or do you yeah, 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 yeah. No, there, there'll be no um, motivational speech necessary, you know. And I'm not big on motivational speeches anyway, but... You know, we, we, we just got to go out and, and play fast, you know, and, and for us, we're kind of a cut it loose bunch and the kids have prepared well uh, and now it's time to just have fun on a football field and compete and run and hit and do the things that, we, you know, that come kind of instinctually when the whistle blows. So there'll be no motivational speech necessary in that locker room, I can promise you that. Coach, let's talk a little bit about the team. Um, I had a chance to, to join you out of practice for a week, filming your uh, practices from up above, and I love that vantage point because you really get to see things unfold. And one thing that stood out for me, we'll start on the offensive side of the football, I feel like we have an offensive line that has some experience, and I think that it is much improved from the 2019 version. That's taking nothing away from them, but I really liked what I saw up front from your guys. Yeah, I mean, no doubt. And, and we missed those guys. They were tremendous. But the depth, and that's a position for us, we do treat the position differently than most. We play nine linemen. Okay, so, yep. you know, while we had a terrific group of linemen a couple of years ago, the depth really, when you try to play fast and you cumulatively get this many plays, it just does, it's not conducive to playing five linemen. So, uh, we're in a much different position there. It's a, it's a great example of how the collective efforts are, are, you know, are bearing good fruit. And it's a hard working group. And, and for us, we have three fifth years there. And Chad Broom Webster, Tucker Barnes, and Tim Forster, who really carried the torch for me um, in passing the message on, on how it is and how and what it means to be a Brown offensive lineman. Coach, what do you think a couple just of the keys are? As Scott had, uh, had mentioned to earlier that, you know, we just got better every time in 2019. And, and I look at the Dartmouth game as, as a ball went through a receiver's hands on an EJ pass rate at the end of that game that we could have won that football game. That's how far we had come from the beginning. What are going to be some of the keys? I mean, not game plan keys, but keys for your team to narrow that down because a lot of the games we did lose, as, as Scott mentioned, we lost by a field goal. We lost by two points. There were heartbreaking losses, uh, you know, as we were coming down the stretch there and we were in these games and it was, you know, it was 38 to 35 or, you know what I mean, 45 to 48. I mean, and, and it was right down to the end. Yep. So what are these guys going to do yeah. to turn that to the other side? Yeah, so there's, there's two components to the, the ebbs and flows of a game that I think playing fast help you. And, and the first is when you have moments where you're kind of playing fast like successfully and being able to seize upon that and build leads, something that we really didn't do a good job of, right? Building a lead. And when you build a lead, you can then, what, what we refer to as depressing the game, meaning slow the game down to our advantage. So, you know, some people talk about four minute, but for us, if you can build leads, you can then depress the game. And then the other thing is when the other team is on a run, 
because we do get a lot of possessions. We do get a lot of plays. Being able to weather those things, uh, you know, and play fast through, hey, just next play mentality. So I think those are two uh, opportunities for us to, on Saturday. Like, can we, when we have an opportunity, things are going well, build on that, play fast and build the lead so that we can depress a game? Or if we have the ebbs and flows of a game where things don't go well, can we rely on some dispersed leadership throughout the team that says, okay, we can weather this, we can continue to play fast and, and, and advance the ball that way. So two things a year ago, it seemed like sometimes we had opportunities to build leads and we just kind of stumbled. And sometimes when, when things weren't going well, our response to it wasn't, you know, brown football. So, hey, we got a chance on Saturday and I think the kids have prepared well to do that. John, before I came here today, I went out to practice and there was a scout there from the Cincinnati Bengals and scouts have made regular appearances at Brown football practice this summer, uh, looking at all your guys, but certainly looking at the quarterback, E.J. Perry. He had such a terrific year in 2019 and now back for his final year. Um, sky's the limit for E.J. He's a terrific talent coach, isn't he? And, and, and before yeah. we even talk about him, just to profess it, put him in his position, yeah. we won one Ivy League, two games in that year, and he yeah. was you know, offensive player of the year, co-player of the year. I mean, that's quite an attestment yep. to the performance that he put on that football field right that year. Yeah, yep. and I think specifically to the NFL aspect of it, what it means to be a really high caliber football team in this league right now, in the Ivy League, is, I mean, we've had nearly every every team through, nearly every NFL team's already come through. And that's what, you, that's what it takes. I mean, the Ivy League, the caliber of play right now is very, very high. Our guys know in order to compete, you're, it's Division One football, and you've got to have guys that play at that level. Uh, EJ, I'm, I'm lucky. He's a, he's a terrific ball player and all that, and, and that's great. But he is, he is a terrific captain, an excellent practicer, good worker. And when you have guys like EJ who are great leaders, and then you have guys like Alan Smith who's a terrific leader, and you complement that with whether it's Nate who is – on tonight and his classmates yep. for fifth years and Jason and his classmates who are seniors uh, you're on to something pretty good so that's how I feel right now it'll be fun to compete it'll be fun to you know cut a guy like EJ loose and some of those guys and and, and probably equally important it'll be, cut, it'll be fun just to watch guys be leaders for me on a football field in you know in a real combative moment. I mean, EJ was so tough, though, Coach. Oh. He is. I mean, to, he, he had the Perry toughness. We would see him almost being sacked, Scott and I, and he would somehow split the defense or, or shed off to make a 35-yard dart pass down the field. I mean, it was exciting. I mean, he's <laughs> he's special. Like I, I, The highest compliment I can pay him is he's a Perry, and I think yeah. anybody associated with Brown football knows exactly what that means. He's a Perry. They're wired differently. They're built differently, they compete until the death, and I just, John, I mean, the fun yeah. we had calling his games oh. in 2019, I, uh, that's why I'm so excited for Saturday, for this whole team, but for a guy like that, who just, you don't know what he's going to do next. And, and, he's, and he's getting better, you know, he really works hard, he takes pride in how he, you know, he hones his craft and improves his craft of being a good quarterback. Uh, Heather Marini's done a terrific job developing uh, this year, taking that another step. And, uh, yeah, it'll be fun, man. All right, so tell us a little bit about Rody. When you flip on the film, what are you looking at uh, at, at this Rody Rams team? 2-0 and to start the season. Yeah, and, and they're 2-0 and for a reason. They're excellent. <laughs> you know, there's no other way to say it. You go up to Albany. So for those who don't know, in, in the FCS, Albany – is a, is a power. You know, they're very strong and they're a very competitive team. And you go on the road to Albany, that's that's a statement win at this level. So that's a terrific win. It's a reflection of the work that Jim Fleming, their coach, has done. Um, they have uh, a great combination and terrific quarterback and terrific running back, uh, which every coach aspires to have. Uh, and they just have good, you know, team speed, uh, which is – Knowing the game, uh, you know, the Governance Cup as well as I do, that's a common theme for Rhode Island. You know, they're going to they're gonna come at you with really good team speed. Um, on the back end, Tippett is a, an elite FCS secondary man, yep. uh, and he's playing like it. So, uh, this, you know, we wouldn't want it any other way. Play a, you know, top 25 FCS football team in the Governance Cup, and, um, yeah, it'll be a great challenge. 
That's it. That's it. Man. All right. Great challenge. Coach, Ready to go. Good luck on Saturday <laughs> against the Rams. <laughs> and ready to go, man. <laughs> we'll, we'll see you at Richard Gus Field at Brown Stadium. Thank Folks, you. that'll do it for this edition of the James Perry Show from Home Street Pizza. We're here every Thursday night for the next nine weeks at 6 o'clock. Hope you can come out and join us. If you can't, you can watch it on Facebook Live or listen to it on AM 790 WPRV. For John Anderson and the head coach of the Bears, James Perry, my name is Scott Kredishi saying good night from Home Street Pizza. This has been a presentation of Learfield IMG College.